fizmi Pajis motiha Milli nafir Titħabek me La matrit U kemnix Tintara l-ftit Li jerġada kizmin Album retratti Lura fizmi Pajis motiha Milli nafir موسيقى <تصفيق> اللوم سنرجع ولورا بفاريت لورا في زمين ما بايزنا مالتا الفيدي تالبوبلو مالتي الفيدي نسرانية جابا في مالتا وصلا مالتا سان باول اللي احنا نايدولو مسيرنا سان باول سمورو لورا في زمين سمورو في سنين ستين متى في مالتا كان يأتيجي التشالبرات التشنتناريو تا سان باول يلا كنت تفل زاير عندي ديا زايرة تا دا كزمين كالي مدوار هم سنين إما منكم اللي زغور تفتاك روح التشنتناريو تا سان باول كناو فستي تا سان باول كناو الدريح لي من ياف كان دار التوستيات و بركت تانت النيس الدريح تا سان باول في مالتا تشينا ماتوغرافو تشرتو ألفريد فيلا جيرا كنتالا برودوزيوني برودوزيوني لجيب لسم The Heritage of Paul الكدبة كنت تا المكبي فيكتور آباب بوستا منكم يفتاك روح فو الردفيوجين Il-kommentarju sar min Father H. Born, personalita ohra li l-vuċi tijaw kienet zgur familjari fu il-radifjuġin. Għana raw l-owel parti ta' dana il-dokumentarju Black and White fissnin sittin. A tiny island on the Mediterranean already famous in prehistory. The old sites such as Imja, Tazuta, Hajakim, Nidra, Bordinadur, the Hypergeum, and the Tarshian temples. The ancient monuments in Malta and Goto which date back thousands of years and have survived the ravages of time are a clear indication that the Maltese people have always held in high esteem the temples of their gods. We may say that love of religion is their principal prerogative and if today Malta can lift its head proudly and boast of its great magnificent history we may state that it was the deep religious sentiment of the loyal noble people which gave life to that wonderful history. Tarshian megalithic temples constitute eloquent proof of the Maltese people's reverence and devotion. did not succeed in effacing or weakening this natural disposition in the hearts of the Maltese and of the Godzans. And when the voice of the Lord pierced the clouds 
and reached the heart of Saul of Tarsus on the way to Damascus to transform him completely from a fierce persecutor of the new faith to a great apostle, Malta too was on its way to Damascus. Divine grace was paving its way to the hearts of the Maltese and of the Gothans, already well disposed to uplift their religious sentiments to a supernatural sphere and to receive the heritage of Paul. Sicily to North Africa, one sees far below a group of small islands kissed by the azure Mediterranean Sea. They are the islands of Malta and Goto. From that height, one cannot fail to see the stately old city of Mdina looking down like a silent queen from the heights of the bastion surrounding it. And then towards the sea, towards the sea farther north, two tiny islands which were destined to play a great role in the history of Malta. The islands of St. Paul, so called because it was probably on their rocks that the ship carrying the great apostle was shattered and reduced to a helpless wreck. And to the present day, his statue stands on those islands. The statue looking towards the north as if the great apostle, with his arm outstretched, is blessing the islands and keeping the enemy from its shores. It was indeed Providence which stirred the calm seas to a furious gale. A terrific tempest attacked the ship and for 14 days the 276 people on board hardly at or drank. By daybreak they saw land and Paul knew that God had brought him to Melita, the small island of the Mediterranean, for its conversion and salvation. The ship was shattered on the rocks and all had to swim ashore. Not one of them perished. St. Paul had told them, he had told them before, that they would be saved. They were well received by the Maltese, who lit a bonfire to dry their clothes. St. Luke, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles, was most impressed by the hospitality shown by the inhabitants. But 
how much more impressed were the Maltese when they saw a poisonous viper springing from the bonfire and clinging with its teeth to Paul's finger. This must indeed be a bad man, they said. He was safe from drowning, but God punished him in another way. But to their great surprise, he just shook the viper back into the fire and nothing happened to him. Hundreds of miracles worked by Christ had not been sufficient to draw the Jews to his heart. One miracle was enough for Malta to go down to its knees and acknowledge in God and Paul his apostle. It was exactly where this church stands that the miracle of the poisonous viper took place. This little church was blitzed and destroyed by enemy action. But soon, immediately after the war, it was rebuilt. shipwreck travelled fast and it reached the ears of Publius, the prince ruling the island under Rome. He invited the most important among the survivors to stay in his villa. Among them was St. Paul. The villa is no longer in existence, but on the exact spot where it stood, there is a little church called to this day St. Paul Milley, St. Paul welcomed. It is an insignificant spot, but it stands there to signify so much. It was there that the inhabitants of Malta impressed the writer of the Acts with their spirit of hospitality. That spirit which was passed from generation to generation and remained to this day the most prominent characteristic of the Maltese immediately noticed and praised by the visitor who steps on our shores. Tradition tells us that during his stay in the island, St. Paul worked wondrous miracles after healing Publius's father, who had been long suffering from an incurable ailment, the inhabitants flocked around him with their sick and their afflicted to return to their homes cured, comforted and confirmed in grace. Publius was baptized by St. Paul, then consecrated bishop. He is dearly loved by the Maltese, especially by the residents of Floriana whose patron saint he is. The place where St. Paul lived longest during his three months stay in Malta was a cave outside the old capital city of Amdina. The cave was used by him as a church and as may be understood up to the present time, that cave, still in existence, is highly venerated. A most wonderful thing about it is that though many pieces of stone are hewn from its sides and roof, the size remains exactly the same. Pieces of stone cut from the cave are said to be most effective against poisoning from snake bites. In 1703, Grand Master Pinto directed that a marble statue of St. Paul be put in the cave as a special personal gift. This increased the devotion of the Maltese and the pilgrimages which used to arrive from every corner of the island increased in numbers and devotion. 
and it was a general desire that a chapel should be built right above the cave. It was thanks to the enthusiasm of a certain Giovanni Benequas that this pious desire came into effect. The chapel is dedicated to St. Publius and designed in such a way as to lead by a royal staircase right down to the cave. In the year 1620, it was raised to a collegiate and the canons have the privilege of wearing the eight-pointed cross of St. John sewn in white cloth on their black cloaks. A few yards away from the cave, there is a public square where a big cross marks the spot from where St. Paul used to preach. It is said that every time the Apostle preached from that place, his voice used to be very distinctly heard in the island of Goto, about 18 miles away, thus giving the Gottesans the right to maintain that they were directly converted to Christianity by the great Apostle. Cathedral, built on the site of Publius's palace. During the Arab domination, that cathedral church was reduced to a heap of ruins and rebuilt after the arrival of Count Roger the Norman. Destroyed by an earthquake in 1693, once again it was rebuilt in 1702 on the plans of the Maltese architect Lorenzo Gaffa. St. John's the co-cathedral in Valletta. It is a center of attraction to all tourists. St. John's is a real gem of architecture because it is unique in style. The domed roof shows the famous frescoes by Mattia Preti. Of great value are the Flemish tapestries. These tapestries are a really treasure of art and craftsmanship. On the right side of St. John's Coke Cathedral, there is the little oratory. It was in this oratory that the knights used to assemble for prayers before the election of a new Grand Master. The roof is highly decorated and very famous are the marble statues on the high altar. in this oratory that Caravaggio's masterpiece, the beheading of St. John, is preserved. Some time ago, this painting was restored in Italy. These are clever artists 
where stone cutting or carving is concerned. A mason's dream is to be asked to build a church. This is another imposing church, the third largest dome in the world. It is the pride of the inhabitants of Mostar, a large village on the way to St. Paul's Islands. When the church was being constructed, the villagers offered their free services, and it was built entirely by gratuitous labor. The church is dedicated to the Assumption of Our Lady, and great indeed are the celebrations which are raised each year in true Maltese style on the 15th of August. The dome appears highly decorated and by night when the thousands of bulbs which cover it are lit up, it flares like a flambeau, the true symbol of a heart enkindled with love and devotion. Several churches in Malta and Gozo are dedicated to St. Paul, but the two most important ones are the one in Valletta which is dedicated to the shipwreck of St. Paul. This church in Valletta is also a collegiate and renowned for its riches. The other one is a Trabat near Indina, built on the site where St. Paul lived. All these churches dedicated to the apostle of the Maltese are the most eloquent proof of his place in their hearts. And still more to once more churches. More and more churches are built every year. Here we see a new church under construction at Blat al -Baida. It's going to be dedicated to Our Lady. Another church is that of St. Gregory's at Slema, built in genuine Byzantine art. And yet another church the church dedicated to Our Lady of Fatima, which has become a real center of devotion and love. Yet another proof of St. Paul's heritage. Church of Christ to see their apostle leaving their shores, but God was calling him to the eternal city. There he was to lay his life for Christ, his only love. But Paul left his heritage with us. He taught us to seek life in the sacraments of Christ. Our forefathers showed their eagerness to free their newly born children from the clutches of the devil by washing away the guilt of Adam and Eve by the waters of baptism. From generation to generation we have followed in their wake. And the happiness of a newly born babe in the family is surpassed by the joy of its rebirth in Christ. And when through weakness we fall, again religion comforts us with forgiveness. So sweet the words of absolution reach our ears. But the greatest moment of our life is when we become one with Christ 
through Holy Communion. Our Apostle, in his heritage, left us a deep love for Christ in Holy Eucharist. inspires us when through the sacrament of confirmation we become soldiers of Christ and promise that following in the footsteps of our apostle we swear to fight the good fight leading to triumph and glory. mortality. Se la dussa a Lowell Pausa Tana. Il pausa ta reclami. Se ne giulura, in compro ne rau, e tieni parti te dan il documentario. Album ritratti, l'urra fismi, l'urra fismi, paiz motivo, millina fi, millina fi, ti hapta mi la matrit, o che mi sti impara il fti, li ergia da chi smin, mil, Ja da kizmin, mil, jdih. 